like Fidelm, Maeve was fully an adult and had no problem using her body to get what she wanted. From the cattle raid story, Lane understood that Maeve would sell her daughter to any warrior willing to fight Kakolin. She'd already gotten two men to switch sides, as both Fergus and Kakolin's brother, Ferdiad, were once Ulstermen, but now fought on Maeve's side, the side of Connaught. Maeve's jaw shifted visibly as she saw the Ahome troops fall in line in front of hers through some gap in the wall, the same one Lane had entered, giving Alil and his army a head start. Maeve and Alil were two parts of a family at war, a home divided, but Lane wondered if it came down to it, would they join forces? as a means of survival? Or would pride be the death of them? Speaking of pride, Morgan was Lane's pride. Morgan was the Irish goddess associated with war and death in Celtic mythology. She could shapeshift into different animals and from a young woman to an old woman. Morgan is often described as a trio of individuals, all sisters, called the Three Marigna. Lane thought of Morgan as all the different aspects of herself. When the army had passed and Lane finally got to the gate, Fidelm pointed her to the next place to go, which was to Morgan's cottage. Morgan was an extension of her, she knew but also separate from her, and Lane wondered why Evelyn would be pointing her in the direction of her lower self. The cow, Fidelm said, pointing. Just as Lane turned the post where Fidelm stood, she saw that the child looked at her. Her pixie eyes brightened and she smiled. When no one was looking, a cottage emerged that Lane had never seen before. The cow is at Morgan's cottage, Fidelm said. What cow? Lane asked. And then her heart almost exploded. Dawn! She felt so exhausted she could cry, but she told herself to stop her whining. Now wasn't the time. This was not a time for thinking, but for hard work, for doing. She closed her eyes, and when she did, she saw the brown cow Mertes had been holding by the reins. In ancient Rome, before Lane blinked and was falling down the tree of life, into Ireland. Now, Dawn was standing in front of a stone cabin. He represented all of her dreams come true. When she opened her eyes and looked behind her, Fidelm was pointing with that expression on her face of a sarcastic teen, like Lane was a stupid adult, but cute for trying. Okay, thanks, Lane said, waving back to Evelyn. Lane must have swerved wrong, not used to the war cry and the armies pivoting in every direction, let alone riding a horse. like she had been overly confident riding a horse for the first time and her beginner's luck had run out. See, I told you, you'll never be a warrior, Maeve said, spitting on the dirt next to Lane as she passed. Lane was taken off guard by how she wasn't on the horse anymore. 
She fell, and there was a sharp pain in her ankle. Lane rolled her ankle around. There was this gash out of one of her fingers, like when she cut herself with the knife while working on her new food service job. It seemed to be taking forever to heal. The last remaining youth on horseback passed her. Ew, you're crusty, Carlos said. Carlos said it in his high voice. He was very clean and particular about his laundry soap, though he was sporty and portrayed a manly man. Lane was left wondering what crusty meant. Your voice is too quiet. You'll never make a great leader, Little Miss said. I can speak up, Lane said. I can learn. I'll take that as a compliment. I guess that means I have the capacity for great transformation. How come you're always so enthusiastic, Little Miss said. Carlos named Robert's sister Little Miss, but her name was actually Lane as well. It's kind of annoying, my dude, Little Miss said. Lane felt like when she got trapped on the wrong side of the rope toe while snowboarding as a kid and could not cross over without being skied over. All the kids looked down on her and laughed. It was safe to say she spent some time licking her wounds. Sometimes a wound takes a while to heal, and sometimes you just have to cry. Ra, the Egyptian sun god, supposedly formed the bee from his falling tears. He granted the bee the task of relaying sacred messages, relaying wisdom from the divine to humans. Since B was born from the sun's tears, and since he was a messenger of the divine, Lane thought this must be a good reason to let them fall once in a while. Tears are a road that take you somewhere. Tears lift your body off the ground, carrying you down slope to somewhere better. Who knew? Lane would think later. Maybe Maeve had been depressed at the time and was taking things out on her. Maybe her comments had nothing to do with Lane personally. Maybe there were things Maeve admired about her, even though she pretended otherwise. Even though it was Lane who looked up to Maeve as a successful businesswoman. It's okay, Lane thought. I believe in them, even if they don't believe in me. Thanks for watching my video, guys. I'll be back with another video next Wednesday. Till then, ciao!